enough to let me kick off this exclusive interview tonight with the men, the myths, the legends, Jesse the Pit Boss, and Toshi Flo. For the 40,000 plus members in the PulseChain.com telegram room, Jesse and Toshi are well-known names famous for dropping some of the biggest knowledge bombs we've heard in there. Everything from the benefits of Pulse Chain, like what makes it faster, cheaper, and more secure, to down the rabbit hole aspects of crypto. And when Toshi is not sharing what's inside that alpha brain of his, he is busy creating some pretty sick NFTs, which I'm sure we'll all get to see very soon. But tonight, Jesse and Toshi have given Hextrovert Ty the exclusive inside scoop on their new project launching on Pulse Chain and what's in store for all of us. It is a very exciting project and a great example of what's to come on Richard Hart's new blockchain. Very excited to have Jesse and Toshi with us tonight. Thanks for joining us, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us on. That's a warm welcome. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us, guys. Jesse, I'd like to start with you. What makes Pulse Chain special in your eyes, and why are you excited to be launching your project on it? Well, the Pulse community is kind of an evolution of what you know we had the hex we have the hex community um who's banded together for the last um two years now and learned so much in this space about what's wrong in the cryptocurrency um space as a whole you know there's a lot of the there's a lot of exchanges that have scam wicks they hold your keys they lose your funds um there's a there's a big giant lack of education in the cryptocurrency uh space um that really ends up having people get wrecked but one thing that has never happened is anybody who's bought and hold hex getting wrecked that doesn't happen um but what does happen is they become just more and more educated in the space and you see the community just get bigger and bigger and bigger and richard hart really is is like the the fearless leader who's who's taught us um all the the skills and and uh tradecraft necessary to keep ourselves uh safe in this space and to further educate people about how do you actually make money how does money work how does traditional finance work compared to cryptocurrency and why is cryptocurrency better and it got to the point where he literally said you know what there's so much ridiculous things going on in cryptocurrency right now. Um, let's fix it. And he's whether that's the gas fees or those scam wicks on the exchanges I was talking about, we're sick of it. We're done with it, right? So out of that kind of evolved um, the idea for Pulse Chain. And here it is, right? He spent a lot of time. He's He's forked Ethereum. It's in its test net right now. And what pulse chain is is a faster cheaper version of ethereum ethereum's got some issues going for it right it's been around for long enough where it's the ethereum coin is very expensive as the native coin ethereum coin goes up in price the gas fees or the GUI, the you know subset um decimal of the native token, the native coin, it also gets more expensive as the price of Ethereum goes up. So over time, gas fees have gone up. And then the congestion in the network has also fed that that animal where it's now pretty much unusable for normal things that we would like to have happen on Ethereum. We would love it if cryptocurrency was <clears throat> able to be used for everyday tr transactions. If you could um send money from one person to another and have it only cost fractions of a penny but there's there's times on ethereum where just a simple send of funds from one person to another could cost anywhere from 40 to 60 dollars and then there's other functions that cost much much more than that a simple swap could cost 60 dollars all the way to 300 dollars it's just completely unusable for everyday people and it's a deterrent to mass adoption we'll never get mass adoption with the way ethereum is running right now so how do you fix that so ethereum says well we can move to a new system proof of stake 
as opposed to proof of work. And they make these promises year after year after year. Yep, we're migrating to proof of stake. It's coming, we promise. And then it never happens. And then they push it and they keep pushing it and it takes longer and longer. And it really begs the question, will they ever be on a proof of stake? You know, every time that we hear this, it's just pushed out longer and longer and longer. And <clears throat> I have a take on that, why it's so difficult for them to move to a proof of stake system, which is much more efficient and cheaper. Um, and that's simply that it's already a proof of work. You already have thousands and thousands of mining computers all running these transactions and verifying transactions and recording the ledger across them all. So what do you do? You, you just turn them all off and, and you reroute the transactions straight to validators. And even if you made the promise that you were going to do that, that very bullish announcement drives the price of Ethereum up even higher. So before you do that, you're only making the gas situation, the gas fees to run transactions. You're only making it worse and worse up until the moment you do that. And the miners have no incentive at that point. You've just told them you're working them out of a job. They will know they will cease to exist and their income that they're gathering will be gone. Right. So they have no incentive to to vote down the fees. <clears throat> so it's really a sticky situation, right? It's very difficult. Um, so what do you do? Well, you can launch a, a brand new blockchain. Um, whether that's, you know, Solana or Kusama or um, any, even Bin <coughs> Binance, any of these other blockchains. And they can say, oh, well, we got, we have computers that run proof of stake now, these validators. It's much faster and much better. You just got to migrate over here. So they launch empty and there's nothing there. <clears throat> so they start out with like, very, very low liquidity, very low volume, and they literally have to start over from scratch from and and take a large portion of the market cap and funds out of Ethereum for them to be successful. And, and they usually end up having a fraction and being, you know, successful, but they'll never have the full potential of what Ethereum has already built. They built Ethereum as this giant empire. <clears throat> so what Pulse Chain has done is this simply a complete clone of Ethereum. Everything that already exists on Ethereum will already exist on Pulse Chain on launch day. So all these tokens, all these um, smart contracts, if it exists, and you own it, and you hold the keys to it on the Ethereum chain, you can go into MetaMask, change a couple settings, and you will see those exact same things inside of the Pulse chain. It's fully stocked and ready, ready for action, ready for people to swap and trade and run functions. Um, and that's something that's never been... <clears throat> something that's never been done and people ask where the value comes well how do you do how do you do that how do you launch a complete blockchain with all these tokens and how are they expected to have any value well it, it's really interesting it, this conversation can just go on and on how automated market makers work but really you only need one single asset on a chain to have a price and because of how everything is paired together, everything will have a price as soon as that one thing has a price. So it's really a beautiful thing. You really only need Pulse Coin, which will initially launch at zero, to eventually be paired against something else. Uh, it will have to be through a bridge back to Ethereum, and you pair it against something that has value, such as. Um, a stable coin or even to Ethereum itself. And by doing that, based on that ratio, Pulse Coin has a price. And everything that's paired to Pulse Coin then instantly has a price as well. Now everything's tradable. And it's literally a complete blockchain copy of Ethereum ready to go. 
Now, those prices aren't necessarily going to be the same. You know, it'll it, the markets will move it differently than the Ethereum chain for all of the tokens in there. <clears throat> but there's very, very real potential that price parity or equality will be reached between the two chains very, very quickly. And if it's not enticing for people to look in their wallets, change a couple settings and see, holy cow, the same things that I had on Ethereum, I have those same things over on the Pulse chain and they have value and I can go swap or I could do this or do that. Even to imagine for a second that people are just going to ignore that and just like forget that they have tradable tokens and they're welcome to hodl them, but to imagine that people are just going to do nothing and look the other way with all that value owned by them and they have the keys to it, that's just ridiculous. People will use this. And I will for sure be one of those people using it. You can count me in. Uh, Toshi Flo, how about you? What uh, excites you about Pulse Chain and what are some of the things that you're looking forward to in the not so distant future? God, you know what? <laughs> I think the, the most is is the fees. I mean, I, I I've been in cryptocurrency since about 2016. Um, you know, it's just it, it's the fees. It's just never been so ridiculous. You know, Ethereum is just uh, you know, we need a solution to it. And I I agree with Jess. It's they keep making promises that something's going to happen, but how do you, how do you do that? What do you got to roll back the chain? Uh, and 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 they don't want to do that. So I, I think it's just an, a uh, back burner kind of situation. And uh, Richard came up with a solution. I, I, I love it, you know, and we need this. I think, I mean, it's going to be crazy. I, I, I look at even things like NFTs and it's like, oh my, if you, if you really think about it, all the NFTs that uh, that are being minted and, and collections and um, I, you know, and I know Richard's not a big fan of NFTs, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are, I definitely am. I'm also a creator. Um, but it's, it's wild. Um, you know, like right now, you could, if you meant the collection of 10,000 NFTs on Ethereum, you're looking at, you know, three, $4,000 to do that just to get them onto the, yeah, just to get them minted. Right. But, uh, Pulse Chain's going to be a fraction of that. You know, it's going to be a pen. What? <laughs> Maybe, probably less than 10 bucks or something like that. Maybe five bucks. I don't even know. Um, and it's going to be amazing. I think that there's going to be a lot of market adoption, um, not just with crypto in general, but, you know, fungibles and non fungibles is going to be insane. Um, and I think we're going to see just tons and tons of projects come onto the pulse chain. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm super, super excited. I, I feel like, Everybody that's sick of all the stuff that's been happening as far as fees and, uh, you know, they're, they're in the pulse. They're, they're really looking in this direction and, and they're coming together and, and thinking about developing great. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that you know, Ethereum got just got decimated because of. Uh, but there's a lot of things that, that got decimated projects because of those fees on, you know, on Ethereum and those types of projects that are that are, you know, that are amazing. Um, well, actually, those projects are going to exist, can exist on the Pulse chain. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I'm super bullish as well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Toshi, that's an excellent point. Um, you know, as, as excited as, as the users of Pulse chain are already, I can only imagine how excited the developers are and the project owners are to be able to launch a project where, as you stated, they're not decimated by the uh, Ethereum gas fees. Um, so yet another, uh, another very exciting aspect of Pulse Chain. Jesse, uh, while we're on the topic of, of excitement, um, is there anything else that, that gets you excited about what's to come on Pulse Chain? I, I've heard a lot of good things from, from our own community. So <clears throat> historically, when you make a stake, your stake is pretty much locked up. It's stuck. You can't do any, you can't trade it. You got to wait for it to end. You're welcome to merge the end stake. It's not advisable. Um, but there's some interesting concepts developing and, and some developers working on something called encapsulated stakes. 
if you can wrap a stake inside of a smart contract, can you transfer ownership of that smart contract? And the answer is yes. It's actually been it's been done. You can do that with Gnosis Safe right now, um, and and writing a little bit of code to make a good front end to make that just very easy to do. You can encapsulate stakes and then transfer ownership of stakes. That's going to be a game changer. You know, people who get pinched, you know, for funds, they need some funds, and they've got a long stake. Instead of emergency end staking and ruining it, um, they can simply transfer ownership of it. So that that's a very interesting thing. Um, some people are fans of it. Some people are not. Um, I've heard so a lot of excitement in the NFT space. Again, NFTs are very expensive to mint and 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 make over on the Ethereum chain. <clears throat> it's going to be very cheap to do on Pulse chain. So there's people looking at ways to fork different protocols and bring them over, so that there's there's platforms for people to to uh, transact and trade um, with all their uh, favorite NFTs. I mean, imagine yeah. waking up and just seeing there's. I mean. This is the great part. Think about all the NFTs that are on Ethereum right now that are all getting copied over to Pulse Chain. <laughs> so many. Um, and and a lot of, and there's a lot of them that have very, very high value. Um, they're gonna be like, wow, look at this. I have another copy of this. Oh, I can go I can bring this over to Pulse Chain. Maybe I should go over there and see what's going on. I think I think I think we're gonna get a lot of market adoption. Um especially with the fees being so low. I think people are just, it's going to be like a breath of fresh air for anybody in crypto that's been doing anything on Ethereum. Um, I think it's, once the word gets out, which we all know it's going to get out, like Jeff said, as soon as somebody realizes, I can just switch my RPC settings on my MetaMask and I'm going to have tokens in there automatically with values. I better go check this out. I know you touched on that expensive side of the nfts like to mint them and obviously it appears uh, they're, they're quite expensive to buy as well um do you see a good opportunity for uh, people who want to make less expensive nfts you know like collector cards or things like that where they're just priced out not only to mint them but to sell them and not only that but the people Absolutely. who buy them because it makes no sense to buy a five dollar collectible but it costs you forty dollars to get it a hundred percent, right? hundred percent. And and also just in general, like look at all the people. So, I mean, when the, I, I, I'm sure you guys remember when, I don't know, what was it like? Was it like a month ago, Jess? I think it was, or was it like a month ago when ETH gas just started going bananas? I mean, it was like insane. And everybody was like, what, what's happening? And, and like a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars to do it. Send. <laughs> I went on to open C and, uh, so I went, sorry, I went on Etherscan and I was just, I was looking at, at OpenSea transactions and it was honestly, it was an OpenSea of failed transactions. So like, so all the customers were getting charged those fees and OpenSea wasn't making the sale. Lots of them. So it's got to be on somebody's radar, right? Like some people got to realize this, like, man, I just lost my, I was going to try and buy this thing. I still got charged the fees and OpenSea is probably like, oh my God, look at all these failed transactions. How much money do we lose being on Ethereum? I mean, it's a real thing. So I, I was in shock. I was just looking at it and I was like, oh my gosh. So I think people really appreciate uh, what they'll be able to do on the Pulse chain. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be cheaper. It's going to be faster. I mean, and like you said, you'll be able to buy things that are, you know, they're more affordable, um, especially with NFTs. Like you were saying, like if it's a card or something like, hey, it's worth five bucks, like you can pay five bucks for it. 